Welcome to today's video. We're talking about teen mood variability and moody teens and how to deal with it. Teens have high variability of moods, right? But it's not always about you. Do you have a teen or tween? Do their moods change randomly, seemingly with the wind or apparently for no reason? One minute you're hanging out with the family or while watching a movie, everybody's happy and they're enjoyable to be around. Five minutes later, you're dealing with an angsty teen who's blaring loud music from the room and nobody else can think straight. What's up with that? What did you do? Is it about you? Are they nuts? Is it hormones? How long is this going to last? Right? These are a lot of parents are struggling with this, right? Well, in the next few minutes, I'll show you why your kid's mood has nothing to do with you or anything you did absolutely most of the time. Even though those moods have a huge impact on the environment and everyone around them. We'll talk about how to deal with the moods and integrate that new variability into the family dynamic. My name is Matt Kenyon and I am a family relationship coach, parent, mentor, and adoptive dad, a psychology student, and the owner of Free Thought Coaching. I help parents do what I did, end the conflict, foster trust, and build happily connected families. My promise is that there is always at least one strategy or piece of advice that you can use right after watching my video. So let's get into it. Mood variability. It's just a natural part of being an adolescent. Teen emotions are often extreme and erratic, according to Mike Sassentmahali. So here is his book, Being Adolescent. It's absolutely a great research book. As you can tell, my copy's pretty old. I've read it a few times. As he writes in his book, Being Adolescent, that these extreme moods are erratic and seemingly unpredictable. His work is based on research into the behaviors, thoughts, and feelings of high school students when they were randomly pulled and asked to fill out a log throughout their day, both weekend and school days. He points out that the one constant among the adolescents in the study was a lack of continuity of their consciousness, the fragmented variability of who they were in that moment. So as he talks about moods are literally change how we experience the day, they're, they're how we are being in that moment. And they have a, a lack of experience dealing with these changing situations and extreme moods that they find themselves in. And he points out that their moods change mostly based upon situational context and are largely unpredictable. And most of this is because, well, they're less anchored to a baseline like adults are. Most adults have this baseline mood and we just kind of vary from there. They don't seem to have this baseline that we adults have. They seem to swerve from extreme mood to extreme mood much faster than any adults do. In fact, they're more likely to hit extreme moods, both good and bad. Think about it. Teenagers hit euphoric states all the time in their regular day-to-day -day life in a week. When was the last time that you as an adult had a euphoric experience? They shift faster. Adults are usually still happy or sad two hours after an extreme mood event, right? Something that made them extremely happy or extremely sad. However, teens... In his research changed every 45 minutes. They'd be going from extreme happy to extreme sad in 45 minutes. Now, on the upside, that tells us that these teen moods are short-lived. There's some hope, right? So that means that when we're in the moment we're dealing with that moody teen, we can remind ourselves, this is just temporary. It's just part of the process. These great mood swings are sometimes seen as dangerous or disruptive as adults, but honestly, they're, they're not really associated with any ill effect. In fact, even the teens in his research that showed the most extreme highs and lows in their weeks reported the same level of high life enjoyment as the kids who were not quite so extreme. So extreme moods aren't necessarily a red flag or any kind of sign of danger or anything like that. They're just part of your teen's process. They are constantly in flux. He uh, puts it in terms of they're like 
their moods are like the colors in a kaleidoscope, which I know is kind of an older reference. I mean, it is an older book. He is an older man. But a kaleidoscope, if you remember, is just, you know, you kind of turn the thing and, and the colors rotate and change. And it's very random. And it can change from extreme blue to extreme red to yellow to whatever really quickly. So this variability might reflect the trial and error adjustments that they're making to try and fit within this new body and brain structure that they have, not to mention the hormonal changes that come along with those. It could also be related to the high demand and stressors that we put on teens in our modern culture. I mean, we send them conflicting messages. When, when they're 10 to 15, it's just fine if they go play with their friends and act like a kid. But then all of a sudden we switch and we want them to be more adult. These are conflicting messages. How do you be a child and be an adult all at the same time? We put them into conflicting experiences, right? We send them off to go do things that they used to do as a kid, say go to summer camp. But then we expect them to get behind a car and drive a car or get a part-time job. There's conflict in these experiences that we're asking them to deal with. So ultimately, their, their mood changes are natural. And if you've caught the hint here, they're not usually about you, but you can help them. You can help them deal with the moods and find things that work for them and your family to adjust and work within that structure that's now new, this mood change, right? You can help them deal with the moods use empathy and compassion and help them understand what's going on for them and understand for yourself that they're dealing with this mood variability just as much as you are. In fact, it's probably more shocking and feels more out of control to them. So they literally have no control. So you can help them. You can help co-regulate with them, experience their highs, experience their lows through empathy and let them know it's okay and that you're here for them. And then no matter what, you love them unconditionally, no matter what mood state they find themselves in. You can show them support. Hey, I see that you're really struggling right now and you seem to be having a hard time keeping it together. How can I support you? You can remind yourself that the mood is temporary, no matter how big or bad that, that mood is that that angsty teen is showing right now, ultimately it's temporary. Give it 30 to 45 minutes and most likely they'll have moved on to something new. And you can maybe get together and do something fun. You can give direction when they're being disruptive. Let them know that their mood is a problem and offer solutions. Hey, would you like to go for a walk? Let's get out of the house and change where you're at. Again, we learned through his research, through um, my Sassent Mahali's research, that situation has a lot to do with the child's mood. So we can use empathy and support, not, hey, you need to change your tone. And that's a very old way of looking at this kind of mood variability that doesn't take into account how natural it is and that it's part of the process. And instead, we wanna use compassion and help support them through the process. We can actually use this opportunity to model how to deal with big emotions by actually dealing with your own frustration over their mood variability. See these opportunities as they present themselves in your parenting and use them to model proper behavior. These opportunities abound. It takes a little hard work and it takes some paying attention to catch them, but they're there everywhere you go. And mood variability is just another example of where we can step in and help co-regulate and teach our kids. In conclusion, teen moodiness is normal. It's part of their developmental process and then figuring out how to deal with this new emotional and physical landscape that they're on. When we fight against them, we run the risk of alienating them and, and making them feel rejected. And in return, they reject us. And now we're stuck in this place where everybody's pushing everybody away. And how are we supposed to be connected and be a family at that point? This is harmful and does not help the child learn how to deal with their emotions in a healthy way. Instead, Take the driver's seat, show them support and compassion and understanding. Show them love and use that empathy to build emotional trust with them so that they can feel safe sharing these big emotions with you. 
instead of hiding them or running away or feeling that they have to protect themselves and end up causing more harm. The best part is remember that the moods are short-lived and if you stick it out, you can get through it. And this whole period of adolescence, it will end. I know it feels never ending on some days, but it will end and it will get better. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and help your child through some moodiness today. And again, as always, happy parenting. Thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate the love and support. And please leave a comment down below with what in this video resonated with you or something that you're gonna take away and use in your parenting. And don't forget, if you haven't already, like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can get notified when I put out new videos. It really helps get these videos out to other parents like yourselves who really need them. To join my Connected Parenting community on Facebook, where I have tons of other resources and a group of parents like yourselves who are struggling with the same issues you are, click the link down in the description. Have a great day. Try to be the parent today that your kid needs, and happy parenting.